back to GearWire.com. My name is Bill Holland, and we're looking once again at the step sequencer in Sonar 7. Now, what I'm going to do in this demo is I'm going to show you how to use the filters, how to assign them, and uh, get some really cool effects with your loops in the step sequencer. I'm going to open Massive, first of all, go in here, and you'll notice under my macro controls for the drat, the drat base, it has uh, some macro control um, MIDI CC IDs. In this case, mod wheel one. We have five is portamento time, 22 is undefined. So let's just play this real quick. I wanna see what these do. All right, so we know for a fact that we're going to be using 22 through 26. Um, I might assign one as well. So let's go back to our step sequencer. I'm going to go here and go new value, um, 22, okay. New value, 23, okay. New value, 24, also okay. New value, 25, okay. New value, 26. Okay. All right. So, now what I want to do is, first of all... Oh, let's also assign number one, of course. So, let's take number one, and that's giving it more of a bassy tone. So, let's, at the very end, just kind of have it go up here. Let's see what happens. And let's adjust the release, which was number 26. Number 5 is the portamento. Check out some of these other values. Let's go back to our massive, and I'm going to see. Um, hang on, go to, back to the synth rack. Actually, the view would be the synth rack view. Go down to massive, double click. Ah, room 23. That's like the reverb. So we're going to go back to our step sequence, and we are going to make sure add new value 23. Okay. So let's at the very end have it just kind of open up here and play it back. Now let's work this in with the uh, drum machine and see what we get. Now a similar thing can be done with the drums. If I want to go in here, I can actually... Uh, tweak some of these parameters as well uh, the drum though we're going to have to do one of two things first of all sometimes these maps are exactly the same so it doesn't matter let's go to NRPN oh we're lucky the dramatic is automatically mapped to the default NRPN so let's say we want to take the bass drum and add some drive to it halfway through let's see what happens there Adds kind of a different effect to it. We can add other values. Let's go to NRPN. Uh, what do we have? We have decay. We can open up the bass drum decay at the very end of this loop and see what that does. can be adjusted as well so I can go in here and if I want to uh, make the snare drive go a little bit crazy we can also go in and hit NRPN go to our snare 
Let's see what other values we have that we can use. We can do noise cutoff, uh, mute mod, mod amount. Uh, let's see what happens if we turn the decay way down and just kind of variate it throughout the track. Sometimes it pauses a little bit if you're running on a slow processor. Good to note. So you can actually open it up at the end here if you want. Anyway, those are just a few of the things that you can do using the step sequencer. There's a lot more I'm sure you can get creative with. Um, one thing I didn't mention earlier that I want to mention really quickly is that you can actually add and subtract rows by hitting this button. So if you want, so you have F2 here, you can add another row, G10, and it just goes on down the line. Pretty cool. I can also take away rows by hitting the minus sign. So all in all, the step sequencer is a really useful tool if you are looking to, uh, quickly create loops without having to mess around with piano roll. It's a great alternative uh, for programming your beats and your music. But for now, this is GearWire, and I'm Bill Holland.